How many of you say you're glad to be in the Father's house today? All right, you know how the song goes. Check your shame at the door, because what? It ain't welcome anymore. Not in the Father's house. Not where my Jesus is. He took care of that. Amen? Man, I say, I tell you what, I just love being in here. Uh, I love the grace that's in this room. Uh, it'd be one thing for Jesus to give me grace, and you didn't. But I receive it from you, too, and that's a blessed thing. Amen? Some of you this morning say, man, I need grace in a big way. Well, guess what? You're going to find it here today. Amen? Amen? Let's sing it together. Sometimes on this journey, I get lost in my mistakes. What looks to me like weakness is a canvas for your strength. My story isn't over. My story's just begun. The failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does. No failure. The failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does. Sing, ooh, lay your burdens down. Ooh, here in the father's house. So check your shame at the door, cause it ain't welcome anymore. Ooh, you're in the Father's house. Arrival's not the end game, the journey's where you are. You never wanted perfect, you just wanted my heart. And the story isn't over, if the story isn't good. Cause failure's never final when the Father's in the room. Oh, no, no. Failure's never final when the Father's in the room. Sing, ooh, so lay your burdens down. Ooh, here in the Father's house. So check your shame at the door. Cause it ain't welcome anymore. Ooh. How many of you are a prodigal that's come home? Any prodigals out there? Prodigals come home. The helpless find home. The love is on the move when the father's in the room. I see it. Prison doors fling wide. The dead come to life. Love is on the move when the father's in the room. Miracles. Miracles take place. The cynical find faith. Love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. The Jericho walls are quaking. The strongholds now are shaking. Love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. Love is, cause love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. Ooh, so lay your burden. So check your shame at the door, cause it ain't welcome anymore. Ooh, you're in the Father's house. We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging seas. My God, He holds a victory. Yes, there's joy. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. No, He won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. No, we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. 
got something to give this morning if you got something to give the Lord it's his breath anyways let's just give it back to him in praise you give life you are love you bring light to the darkness you give hope you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you. Sing, great are you, Lord. You give life. You give life. You are the love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken we sing great are you lord it's your breath because it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you You are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, and you restore every heart that is broken. We sing great are you, Lord, it's your breath, because it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. 
So we pour out our praise to you, oh, cause it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you, oh, we. Sing all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing great are you lord don't you know every knee will bow amen and all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing great singing and all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing singing great are you lord because it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you, oh, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you, oh, sing great are you. sing together sing we sing great are you lord because i need something greater than my issues and my pain lord we sing it to him oh great are you lord and greatly to be praised one more time let's sing it together we sing great are you Let's pray together. Uh, Father God, I just worship you. God, I just I sing a new song to you, Lord. I just praise you. I just thank you for being awesome, Lord. You have pulled me out of the miry clay and you've set my feet on the rock to stay. Father God, I love you. I thank you for what you've done. Today, we celebrate you, Jesus. We celebrate you, Jesus, for the cross. We celebrate you, Jesus, for your obedience to the Father to come to give your life and ransom for ours. Lord, you paid that ransom. You paid the price so that we could be adopted and become heirs of the king. And Lord, we thank you. We love you. We praise you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Greet those around you. You may be seated. Okay, we're going to have a little bit of time for pastor's partners real quick. So if you're knee-high to a grasshopper, come on up here. Sit right here for me. Can you sit right here? Right on these steps. Let me give you a little bit of room here. Right on these steps. Awesome, awesome. Good to see y'all this morning. Listen, I brought a couple things with me today from my refrigerator at the house. Uh, can y'all identify this object? Can you identify this object? Okay. <laughs> Boys, a Coke, a Pop, whatever you want to call it. It's Dr. Pepper, uh, 23 blend of flavors, and we're still wondering what that's all about. Okay. But I've got these two in my fridge, and let's just say that I'm really... Uh, tired and I'm hot. I've been working outside in this heat. Uh, which one do you think I should come get? Water. The water. So everybody agrees the water is a good one, huh? 
okay? And I know a lot of you, some of you, some of you are not coffee drinkers. I don't know who you are, but God loves you too, okay? And you reach for one of these instead or something to this liking, right? Something, uh, and so a lot of times we'll reach for one of these guys, uh, uh, Yes, it'll, yes, it'll pick her up, right, Mr. Dr. Pepper. And guys, listen, there's a lot of times where we have these things in our life like this. So we know that this is probably the better, better thing that we should do. But instead, a lot of times we grab this. This is like a candy bar in a cup. You know what I mean? Like this is just yummy. It's delicious. Uh, and so a lot of times we'll just grab for something that's not good for us uh, because it's what we're... Um, we're desiring at the time when we know that if we continue to do the right thing and do the good thing, that it's going to pay off in the long run. Our health is going to be better and we're going to be, our body's going to be saying, thank you so much. Well, listen, uh, today we're going to be talking about something very special and some of you might not really understand what we're going to do today. If you'll notice, we've got tables over here and over here. We are going to take communion today. Okay. Some of you probably know what that means. Some of you don't. Uh, Mr. Zach over there, he is over there with Jesus by the cross, right? He is uh, by the cross there. And what does that cross represent? What happened on, on the cross? Yes, ma'am. Jesus died on the cross for our sin. We've got an evangelist in the making right here. Amen. Amen. And Jesus died on the cross for our sin. He came down from heaven. Okay. He was like, he was a gift from God. He came down from heaven and he lived when he was 33 years old. He died on the cross just like we knew. He, he knew he would. Okay. We didn't understand it at the time, but he died on the cross and he didn't just die on the cross, but it was it wasn't a pretty sight. I mean, I mean, that's a big deal what he did. And it was really hard. His body was broken and his blood and everything. It was just, it was terrible what, what, it, what the cross looks like. But you know what? Jesus said that I came and my body was broken for you and my blood was spilled for you. Okay. And God's wrath, all the anger towards sin, Jesus took it up on all himself. He drank all the wrath of God so that when you believed in Jesus then you are partaking in his body and you get to live forever because of what Jesus did. And so today at the end of service, we're going to have a time where he said uh, to his disciples, he said, do this in remembrance of me because this is my body and it was broken. So when you eat of this, remember what I did for you on the cross. And this is my blood. When you drink this together, guys, remember as my, my, my children, my, my disciples, remember that this is my blood that was spilled, that took away all your sins and the wrath of God. It washed you clean. Some songs will even say, he washed me white as snow. Even though I was so stained with sin, he washed me white as snow. And so today's a big deal. But sometimes in life, it's kind of like this Dr. Pepper. The world says, hey, just, d just do this. This is just make, it, make, your, uh, make yourself happy for the moment. And Jesus is like, hey, if you will do uh, the right thing, Think about later. Think about eternity, and you'll make better decisions now today. So today, we're going to be talking a lot about the cross. So we're going to be talking a lot about what Jesus did, and we're talking about communion today. So as you're listening today with your parents, I just ask you just to understand that that's exactly what we're talking about. Jesus paid it all because he wanted us to be with him. And we knew, he knew that we couldn't be perfect, so he was perfect in our place. And that's what we call the gospel of Jesus. He saved us because God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life in heaven. Amen? Amen. Well, let me pray for you that I'm going to get you to help me with the Pledge of Allegiance, okay? Father God, I pray for these young people that, Lord, even as a young age, Father, that you might open their ears and their hearts to understand the goodness of you, God, that you've loved us first and that you came down and you started, Lord, the relationship, Father, that we just, that we just get to jump into the covenant that you made, Father, that you're going to be the perfect one. And although we know that we're not, that we can come in and be washed clean by the blood of the Lamb. So, God, I just pray, Lord, that you forgive us of our sins, Father. God, forgive us where we fail you, Lord, and let us come to you, Lord. Let's come to the cross and start afresh today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Y'all stand with me. And there's the flag right there. You put your hand over your heart like this. There you go. And say the Pledge of Allegiance with me, okay? <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Awesome, guys. Y'all give these kids a hand clap as they go back to their seats. <clears throat> <clears throat>
We still have preschool downstairs, so if you got any preschool age and, and you'd like for them to go, Ms. Sharon's going to take them. And then we have a nursery today, too, through that same door. If you have a, a little one and you need to go to the nursery for any reason, we've got that available to you. And I'm sure we got some people there love to hold them babies. Amen? Hey, one, one cool thing, speaking of babies, uh, isn't it awesome to have a lot of little babies running around here, a lot of little kids running around the church? Amen? And, uh, and we already figured out if there's one way you want to grow the church, just keep having kids, all right? And Sydney and Christian think, hey, we're going to do twins. We're going to show you guys how to do it, right? We're going to do it quicker. We're going to expedite the situation. Uh, but it's so awesome to see we have two or three mothers right now that are, that are, uh, that'll be here soon, right? It's fall maybe, fall, winter. Yeah, so uh, we're going to have some, uh, some children between the, uh, Thanksgiving and, and uh, Christmas time. So amen. Amen. So that is my call for plea for help for the nursery. Help. Help, guys. No. Well, we have lots of opportunities to love on these families and love on these little ones, and I absolutely love uh, doing that. So uh, let me get down past the kids' stuff. Have you, ever, um, have you ever been on a diet, anybody, or attempted a diet? Just ever attempted a diet or been on a diet? Okay. Um, so a lot of times when we, we do a diet, usually it's like a, a name brand diet, right? Uh, we're going to do the, uh, what are they called? Oh, man, I can remember a whole bunch of jingles in my head, huh? Okay, the, the, the ad kids diet. Remember, they, uh, you've got all kinds of different diets that you can try. The, uh, now is the carnivore diets, one of them, the vegans. Like, we're going to eat all meat or we're not going to eat any meat, you know? It's like all these different diets that people try. And, uh, and I have, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I recognize that I don't eat as healthy as I should. I love Mexican food and... It is what it is, okay? It is what it is. I love fried fish. I love fried anything just about. I fried some zucchini the other day because you're going to take something healthy and make it not healthy. You just stick it in some grease, put some batter on it, makes it delicious, okay? And so I, I do understand that I've got a problem I'm working through, and that's not what I'm here to talk about today. But in, in my diet adventures, and I'm trying to learn uh, about making just, if I could just do one thing, you know, I'm going to start with that. If I can just do one thing and trade this for that, you know, there, there's a whole bunch of diet things. Just, just eat this and not that. And just trade one thing. No, don't dip it in, you know, don't dip it in ketchup. Don't dip it in chocolate. Just leave it as it is. And, and this will be good for you. So we have, don't eat this, eat that kind of thing. And so today's title is eat this and not that. And guys, I, I, um, we're right smack dab in the middle of three weeks where I believe God is calling me to preach and, and calling me to walk, be honest with you, in uh, just a special time of repentance this summer. Okay, that's a big word. A special time where we have an appetite for revival in our souls. Where if, if God doesn't show up, I really don't want anything else. Does it, y'all follow me? Like, have you ever gotten to that place where your soul is just like, you've been snacking on junk food for so long? Have you ever been on a cruise or been on a vacation and you eat all this rich food so much? You're just like, man, I just want a hamburger. You know, I just some, I want something that's not so, you know, so rich. Or I just want some American food or something. You just get really tired of this. And I just want some home cooked, just good, wholesome food. Anybody ever done that before? Like, man, I, my body is just saying, yeah, that's enough. That's enough. That's enough of the sweets. That's enough of the goodies. You know, it was great. It, was, it tasted great. But, man, I'm done. You know, this is not good for you. And then you feel that, and you're like, man, I need to make a change. Guys, this is what it feels like in our spirits when our soul is just like, that's enough. This world keeps promising you, and it keeps promising you. It keeps shoving stuff in your face, and you're just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take a little of that. I'll take a little of that. I'll pile my plate up. Uh, that is not talking about later okay uh but yeah I'll, I'll pile it up and i'll just start eating this stuff in your soul if you're if you're a christian it's just like ah guys it's just time to clean the plate man it's just time to find something new say god what do you want and i don't know if you feel that in your heart but i feel like in the spirit that's where triple s cowboy church is right now i think if you're listening online maybe that's you but i know that's where i'm at okay where you just you just get tired of the empty promises and you're like i need something solid here and I recognize that it's me. It's not Jesus. He didn't mess up. I did. Anybody there? Like, he didn't mess up. I'm the one who drifted. He's the solid rock. I'm the one who started building on the sand. And I need to do some foundation work. And so, guys, these three weeks, I believe God is calling us to revival. Not just repentance, but revival. Because we know repentance is part of revival. We've got to surrender our lives to him. 
So it's the simple concept that you take certain things that you partake of that are not good. And then you've placed them for something that you know is right. There would be times when I'd eat clean for a period of time, but then slowly pick up old eating habits again. Anybody done that? Where you've just said, no more Dr. Pepper. You remember that? And you didn't do Dr. Pepper for a while. And then that first one you drank after that felt like acid going down your throat. You're like, this can't be good. Go, 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 go. <laughs> and you just keep going and desensitize yourself again. You know, you are laughing because I'm reading your mail. I know we live in the same world, guys. So, so last week's sermon, let's just give you a little recap to kind of segue into today. We, we spoke of um, what, it, what it feels like to be lost, what it feels like to be kind of like hung between two worlds. We, we learned through last week that we're sojourners, aliens, pilgrims. This is not our home. It's not. Feels like home. It's kind of what we grew up in before Christ. That's all I knew. But now that I've been born again into a kingdom, I've got to learn something. And Jesus said over and over again, the kingdom of heaven is like, the kingdom of heaven is like, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Right? He's bringing the kingdom of God down there and said, you are heirs of this kingdom. You are from here now, and this world is not your home. You are in the world, but he says not to be of the world, not from here. Okay? But the problem is, is that we are in the world and we used to be of the world, but we're being sanctified by God. And so in between this place, we feel torn, don't we? It's like pulling this way and pulling this way. And sometimes we just need to say enough. I got to realize who I am. I need to recognize where I come from and live from that place. I ain't from here no more. Amen. My home is heaven. My home is with Christ, was with God. And so, you know what? I need to start living like that here and now. And so, guys, from that, I believe God will reorient you. How many of you ever felt like you just need to be reoriented before? You kind of got a little dizzy. Somebody holds you by the shoulders and go, that way. You know, you've been wandering in the desert for a little bit. I don't know what it looks like to you, but I believe God wants to bring revival. And that's what revival is in our hearts. Philippians 3 stated in uh, last week, we talked about Philippians 3. One of the things about people who are lost, it says their God is in their belly. Okay? Their God is in their belly. Basically what he means is it's in their appetite. Okay? So let me ask you a question this morning. Um, what drives you? What drives you? What puts fuel in your tank? What makes you get up in the morning and want to go? Okay, what brings you to that next step? Now, oftentimes when we talk about being lost, there's lots of things that would bring me to another step that is not of God, right? It's the, just the small little desire to go do this over here. It's the small little desire to say no to Jesus and to say yes to the world. Guys, this is just the reality that we're in. What's driving you? What do you have an appetite for? Okay. Have you ever been sick before and didn't have an appetite? Right? That's a good way to lose weight. It, no, it's not a good way to lose weight, but it happens sometimes until you get your appetite back. But guys, if you don't have an appetite for God, guess what? We're sick. Amen? If we don't have an appetite for God, there's something inside of our soul that is sick and weak. And guys, I believe God is wanting to fuel that fire this morning. So turn to John chapter 6. John chapter 6 and I'm going to read verse 51. <clears throat> David, just hang on, brother. You're going to do the best you can. We're going to probably read most of the chapter, but I'll point out a few verses here and there. Uh, if you brought your Bibles, good for you, because David's got his work cut out for him today. Um, by the way, can we give a hand clap for our tech team? Man, they are killing it. What an awesome group of just alive people that are doing some great things for God. And they're doing our best to, to provide for you and everybody watching on YouTube or Facebook. Uh, John chapter 6, verse 51. We're just going to, at first, we're going to plug this out. And we're just going to look at the verse by itself. And then we're going to roll into some context. So verse 51 says, Jesus is speaking. He says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh which I shall give for the life of the world. Okay? Does that make anybody hungry? Not really. Okay? If you just plug that out, you're going to think, <clears throat> cannibalism? Ugh. 
You know, I ain't being a Christian today, you know, if that's where this is leading. And, you know, a lot of people in this time, they were very confused about what Jesus was saying here. Uh, Even his followers were confused. Like, what are you talking about? Eating your flesh? And there are even some more explicit verses that we're going to talk about here in just a little bit. We'll get there. But if you just pull this by itself, it will be confusing. But I want us to kind of look back in what was going on in the context of chapter 6, okay? So if you've got your Bibles open, just find the first verse of chapter 6. And I'm just going to kind of show you. I love when I'm, when you're reading the Bible, guys, by the way, if you've got a, a written Bible like this, let me tell you some advantages of it. You can see the context a lot of times. It's right. It's all on a page. Usually uh, you can really just kind of see what's going on in chunks. And so I, I kind of encourage you today to grab one. There's one at the table if you need one. Take it home. It's yours. Um, so Jesus, in chapter 6, we see that there is this feeding of the 5,000 right off the bat. Okay. This is what's going on. Jesus feeding the 5,000. That's a pretty big miracle, is it not? I mean, just a couple loaves and some fish. And you're feeding that many people. Um, let me just bring it down to today. If we had two casseroles and a salad. Two casseroles and a salad. It fed every single one of us. And the people behind the counter are going, I don't know how this is happening. You know, the beans just keep coming, right? Uh, I don't know. It's kind of like a bowl of grits. You just keep eating it, you know, and it just never goes. Anyways, some of you don't know. All right. So he's feeding the 5,000, which is a huge miracle to these people. Okay. Not only did they get to see the miracle, which is awesome, but they got their bellies full. How many like some fried fish? Okay. Well, they didn't fry it back then. So I'm glad we're here today. Amen. They got to eat. And in verse 14 says, then those men, when they had seen the sign that Jesus did, said, this is truly the prophet who came into the world. Okay, verse 15, Brother David. Therefore, Jesus perceived that they were about to come and take him by force and make him, a, make him king. He departed again to the mountain by himself alone. Now, uh, just zoom out a little bit. Verses 16 through 21, Jesus is walking on the water, okay? So they're in the boat. They're going across the lake. Jesus is walking on the water. He scares the pejeebers out of his disciples, okay? They're scared. They're crying out loud, which means they were screaming like, you know, girls, uh, what is, there's a ghost on the water, okay? He identifies himself to them. They let him in the boat, and they continue on, okay? Now, verses 22 through 25, the people who had eaten here, they're looking for their next meal, right? I mean, hey, that was lunch. Where's dinner? You know, that was dinner. Where's breakfast? And they are looking for Jesus again. He's like, man, this guy is special. He's really special. Now, let's read verses 26 and 27, okay? Because this is a key passage for us to understanding uh, the confusion later on in the scripture. Verse 26. Jesus answered them and said, Most assuredly I say to you, you seek me, not because you saw the signs, because you ate of the loaves and were filled Do not labor for food which perishes, but for the food which endures uh, to everlasting life. Now, if you have your Bible there and you're writing, highlight everlasting life, okay? Which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has set his seal on him. Verse 28. When they said to him, what shall we do that we, we may work the works of God? Jesus answered to them and said, this is the work of God, what? That you believe in him who he sent. So many people are trying to work their way to heaven. Jesus said, here's the work. You believe in him, okay? I can't work my way to heaven. Jesus is my way to heaven, amen? I believe in what he did. That's it. That's, that's the gospel. Jesus took care of that. Verse 30, therefore he said to them, They said to him, what sign will you perform then that we may see it and believe you? What work will you do? Our fathers ate the manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. And I'm sorry, Jesus is about this time started smiling. He's just like, you're making this too easy for me, aren't you? You know, you, he's like, he's a, he's a rabbi of rabbis. I mean, this guy is a teacher and he is like, I'm about to make this perfect segue into my lesson. Verse 32, Jesus said to them, most assuredly, 
I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he. Everybody say he. The bread of God is who? Is he. No, it was he. The bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then he said to them, they said to him, good grief, Lord, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. I can almost kind of hear Jesus kind of going, look at me, Cletus. <laughs> I am. I am, I am the bread of life. I'm sure you ever try to talk sense into somebody and they ain't getting it. You're talking up here and they're, they're coming down here. He's like, come on, look, at, follow me here. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me, <clears throat> excuse me, shall never hunger. And he who believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. So Jesus is saying, Old Testament manna is just like what you got through eating, okay? That was a heavenly miracle that brought food to your belly, right? That's what manna did. It was a heavenly miracle that brought some sustenance to their body that sustained them on this walk on this earth. Jesus is saying, stop seeking that. God's going to provide for you, yes. But what Jesus is saying is, I am the man. I bring life, eternal life. Listen, here's the big picture, guys. I think, I know, but I'm just going to be easy. I think that so many times we come to church because we want Jesus to give us more small m manna. Right? I just need him to bless me through this. I just need him to let me overcome this. I just need Jesus to heal this. Are these bad things? No. Scripture tells us to pray all kinds of prayers all the time. We got issues. Do we not have issues? Yes, we all have issues. And if you said you didn't have an issue, that's an issue. Okay? It's called delusion. Okay? We got issues. We need Jesus' help in our issues. Yes, indeed. And Jesus is saying, listen. Listen, I want you to just... See the big picture. Zoom out of your issues for just a minute and realize what I'm here for. I'm not here just to keep giving you sack lunches. I'm here so that after this life, when you take your last breath here, you'll take your first breath of eternal heaven. Amen? Big picture. Like, you are headed towards the wrath of God. That is just no way. You have sinned and you have fallen short of the glory of God. And there's no way that you can save yourself. Period. Just, just a desperate understanding of when I leave this earth, I am headed for a devil's hell. And that's just all there is until the manna from heaven comes down. And when we eat of it, we have eternal life. Amen? Jesus said, I am that manna. This is what it's all about. Yeah, you're hungry and I get it. Yeah, you're, you're thirsty and I get it. But what's really going on is I'm here to save you, guys. What he's trying to say is, I am here to save you from your sins, from what is to come for those who don't believe. Believe on me, which is to eat of me, is what Jesus is trying to say. It's a big, big deal. So I want to take an internal poll here for just a second. And just be honest with yourself. I'm not going to get you to raise your hand. How many of your requests to God when you pray are more earthly focused than heavenly focused. Okay? Now I want to teach you something. And I, and I do this all the time. Uh, we do take prayer requests sometimes. And man, we've got pages, sheets out there. We want to know. You know, we want to know how we can pray for you. Because we, this life is messed up. We live in a fallen world. And it's broken. It's sickness and death and pain. And all kinds of things. Levada was talking about uh, anxiety and depression. And all this stuff. We have it. It's here. There's no way around that. We have it. And we want to pray with and encourage one another in that. But what if we just as equally, if not more, started praying heavenly prayers? Right? My cousin, she's lost. You know? Or God, I've got some broken stuff on the inside of me. You know? Heal me of this, this, this thing inside of me that is bent for the world, is bent for sin. God, strengthen my walk. Give me an opportunity today to share the gospel with somebody. Help me have eyes to see how you see who you see, right? 
Help me. Give me your eyes for just one second as the song goes, right? Help me see people how you see people. Help me love Jesus how you love. Help me walk as Jesus walked on this earth. Goes, oh, those are kingdom prayers, are they not? Those are kingdom prayers. And God's like, man, I'm looking for somebody who wants to follow after the footsteps of my son. I'm going to bless their socks off because they're going to need it for this journey. No, life's not going to be easy. Matter of fact, it's going to be harder, but I'm going to still bless you and have favor on you in that process. Guys, I know we live in this world, but we get caught up in it. You know, some of us, if we live, I mean, 100 years, 100 years ain't much, is it? When I was a kid, I thought 100 years was forever. But now that I'm about pushing the halfway mark, I'm just like, woo, it's going by pretty quick. You know what I mean? It's like, it's not a whole lot here. But, but while I'm here, man, wouldn't it be awesome if I figured out what we're supposed to be about? Right? Like, while I'm here, wouldn't it be awesome if I didn't just waste it on the things of the world that just kept promising me these things and said, you know what? I'm going to found my feet with eternity in mind, realizing who I am and where I am and say, you know what? This is going to be about Jesus because this is what's going to matter in eternity. Amen? I'm not just going to go to heaven. I'm going to bring as many people with me as humanly possible. So how many of your requests are earthbound? And how many of your requests are towards heaven? Towards the things that God desires? Second question. It's kind of like it. How many of your driving thoughts and hungers are aimed at the next little slice of heaven here on earth? Right? Right? If I just had this other thing, this is what the world will say. If you just add this and just add that and add this, add that, add, add this, and then, then you'll be happy. Just around the corner, just over that next raise, just over the next promotion, just over the, y'all follow me? And it's just the end of a rainbow. We just never catch up to it. But how many of us, what percentage, I'll just be nice to know, what percentage of your thoughts, just your day-to-day -day thoughts, are, are heavenly way or earthly way? earthly way is it 60 70 90 percent 95 percent i'm getting close to some of you you're starting to sweat up in here not just because it's hot no i'm just joking uh but it's just like man i'm just thinking about it. i'm convicted in my heart even guys your pastor i'm going guys you know i live in this world and man i sure am acting like i'm already part of this world because my thoughts are aiming there some of the things that puts gas in my tank drives me want to do things to accomplish earthly things that won't have eternal value that when then when the fire of heaven comes down, it's going to burn up anyways, right? When it's refined by fire, it won't be there. It'll be burned up and I won't have anything to show. But I want my life to count, amen? I want these years that God has given me. He's redeemed me for this. If it was just to redeem me to check out, I'd already been gone. But he kept me here for a purpose. He kept you here for a purpose. His purpose, amen? Not the world's purpose, not yours. Jesus said, thy will be done, right? On earth as it is in heaven. So here's, in the next few verses, Jesus is attempting to reorient their perspective towards heaven. In verse 37. And all that the Father gives me will come to me. And the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Verse 39. This is the will of the Father who sent me. That all that he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up in the last day. And this he, excuse me, and this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up in the last day. Sounds pretty simple, right? Jesus didn't come for political issues. He didn't come for this issue or that issue. He's like, listen, I care about your salvation. That's what I want to talk about. Your salvation today, okay? Because the rest of it ain't going to matter if you don't, uh, if you are not saved. Verse 41, the Jews then complained about him saying, uh, because he said, I am the bread which comes down from heaven. And they said, <clears throat> is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he says, I have come down from heaven? Jesus therefore answered and said to him, do not murmur amongst yourselves. No one can come to me unless the father... Who sent me draws him. I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets. And they shall all be taught by God. Therefore everyone who has heard and learned from the father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the father. Except he who is from God. He has seen the father. Most assuredly I say to you. He who believes in me has everlasting life. Does it sound like a broken record? 
Does it sound like he's repeating himself? Right? Parents, you ever have to repeat yourself to your kids? You know? You're not listening to me. Right? Let me say it again a little louder from those in the back. I've come that you may have everlasting life. I'm the bread of heaven. If you eat of me, you'll have eternal life. I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. Sound like a broken record? It's simple. Jesus came to save. Verse 52, the Jews therefore quarreled amongst themselves saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Here we go. Then Jesus said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. I know what's getting weird in here. Y'all are looking at me funny. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I am in him. As the, father, as the living Father sent me, I live because of the Father. So he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers ate the man and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. These things he said in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. I'm sure he didn't get a very good uh, offering that day. Verse 60 said, Therefore many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can understand it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this, he said to them, Does this offend you? My answer would have been, "Uh, Yeah. Yes. Yes, it's offensive. I don't know what you're talking about. This sounds weird, Jesus. Let's just get real. Verse 62, then he... What then, if you should see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. I'm so glad Jesus said that because it was really weird. He's talking about, hey guys, I, you're thinking that I'm saying it. I'm, you're just going to like, here, I'll take the left finger. You take the right finger. You know, I don't know how this is going to work. There's only so much of Jesus, you know. We're gonna try, you know I don't know how, how we're going to have to do this. But what he's saying is like, listen, you're still thinking about like food to eat. You're still thinking about like the manna in the desert. Okay, I'm trying to tell you spiritual things. Okay, eat of me, partake of me in the spirit. Your flesh, it profits nothing. I'm here for your soul. Okay, I'm here for your soul. So Jesus clears it up that we don't have to literally eat him. But yet there is a spiritual feeding on Jesus that he speaks of. So how do you spiritually feed on Jesus? Probably the question of the day right there. The answer is the same it was as it was before you do the works of salvation which is to believe that Jesus came from heaven that he is the bread of life and that the his bread were the body were broken and that his blood was spilled for you and me right that's it that is what Jesus came to do the culmination culmination of his ministry here on earth was to die right on a cross that resembles that right there was to come and die. I believe that Jesus physically took the beating and the torture and death that I was supposed to have. He took that in the flesh and was broken for me and for you. I believe that. I believe Jesus came and literally the death, the, the death that I was supposed to die, he took it away from me. And through his body, his, the brokenness of his flesh comes our salvation. Amen. I believe he died for our sins. And I believe that his blood was spilled as the Lamb of God, the ultimate sacrifice for our sins. That's what Christians believe. That his blood, his literal blood, Jesus was, that's what Jesus was trying to say. No, 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 my real flesh. My real flesh. My real blood. This is what's going to do it. My real flesh. Like this back is fixing to be shredded for you. Like the crown of thorns is coming. This is going to be terrible yes my real skin and flesh this is going to take it for you it's going to take it like i'm going to feel the nails i'm going to feel all the stuff it's going to happen i'm going to be in this what jesus is trying to say like my real blood when it's coming out right when the when the sword goes in or the spear goes in and and blood and water come out yeah yeah that's for you that's really what's going to happen it's being spilled out as an offering to god for you what, is, what do you do? How do you do the works? 
I believe and I respond. I understand and I move. I hear and I repent and I follow hard after Christ. Amen? Which that means I got to take up my cross daily. I got to recognize who I am daily because I forget. Anybody forget what you had for lunch yesterday? Yep. Right? I forget. I've got to take it up daily. I got to recognize who I am and what Jesus did for me. Verse 64. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe and who would betray him. And he said, therefore, I have said to you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him by my father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. <clears throat> okay, let me just tell you what just happened right here. I'll tell you what happened. There was a separation, right? He would have called it a church split back then if they had them, right? Ugh, I know. Like there's just this group of people that were probably more interested in what Jesus was going to do for him, for them on this earth than being eternal minded, okay? And I believe there's a split. I think there's a split within our own hearts sometime where there's part of us that wants to walk with Jesus no more, right? There's a part of us that says, no, he is the one. He's... He, like he's my only hope. What, what on earth would I, would I do? How, where else could I go? And there's this other part of me that says, you know what? But I wonder if Jesus can make me have my best life now. You know? I wonder if he can just do it for me here and make me as comfortable as I could possibly be. Right? Then there's the problem of, again, my God is in my stomach. It's what I want next. It's what I desire next. And then I want to ask Jesus, big G God, to help me serve my little G gods. Right? Do we see the hypocrisy in that? Do we see the arrogance in that? Folks, we have to humble ourselves and pray. So Jesus turns to the 12 and he says, do you want to go away also? But Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Also, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus knows the end is not here so why invest in things that are going to burn it's jesus ultimate reality and understanding he's like i know where i come from that's why jesus seems to talk up here while everybody else is thinking down here it's like i know where i come from let me tell you what it's like let me tell you what it's like let me tell you what it's like and let me tell you that there's a reality of where i come from and where many will go because they don't they take the broad road Okay? They don't believe in me. They don't believe in what I've done. And they don't put their faith and trust in me. And I don't want to see anybody go there. It's the will of the Father. None should perish. So the majority of the crowd could not comprehend nor could they shift their appetite from worldly things to eternal things. Folks, and this is a reality in 2024 just as much as it was a reality then. Okay, Just as much as it was a reality it's a reality here. There's people who will listen to the gospel and they'll go, you know what? I just, I know my leg hurts. I know my transmission's slipping. Can Jesus do that? I know I want this and I want this and I want this out of life, but, but, but taking up my cross? No, no. So during these three weeks of repentance, this is what I'm asking. I'm asking that today, just today, that you recognize that Jesus came from heaven. He is the capital M manna from heaven. Amen. He came to give his life, his flesh, his real flesh and his real blood. And so this morning we're going to take communion here in just a moment. And this is what I'm going to ask of you. As we observe communion, I ask this. I ask that you maybe allow this day to reorient you. As we're looking for revival in our life, guys, we can't have it without Jesus. I don't need a spiritual high if Jesus ain't going to be there, right? I don't need that. All I need is to put my feet back on solid ground and say, this is where it matters. Pull all the fat off of it. Burn all the chaff away. This is what matters. That I am a citizen of the king of heaven. Amen? That he came and died for me. And his body and his blood, when we take this, he said, do this in remembrance of me.
So can we remember this morning? Maybe we remember where we came from. Maybe we remember who our daddy is. Maybe we remember what this is all about and start saying no to all of life's little stuff. (laughs) Sorry, Dr. Pepper. And say, I know what I need to be doing. I know what my life is about. And I need to start repenting. I need to be about my father's business and not ask him to be about mine. Amen? I need to quit playing games. I need to come back to the cross and say, God, reorient me here. The bread and the body. That's why he said, do this in remembrance of me because we need it. Amen? Y'all stand with me, please. I know we've got young people here, and I know I've got kids too, and I know that it's, it could be distracting for you, but listen, we're all a big family, okay, so don't, don't even worry about it, but this is what I'm going to ask for you to do in the next 10 minutes, okay? If the Holy Spirit is working on you, I'll ask that you be in, a, in an attitude of prayer, okay? Say, God, I'm going to do this. I need this. I need to be recentered, reoriented. I need revival in my life. I get it. This is, this is your time. Maybe some of you in here are some like the other ones, like, man, I'm out. I don't want it. I don't need it, or whatever the case may be, or I'm too distracted to think about it. All I ask of you is that you just respect those, quietly respect those who are making some decisions for God. Can we do that? As this time, we're going to, Jay, David's going to play a song for us. As the song plays, this is what I ask is that um, a head of household or maybe somebody at the table come up and get uh, a cup. A jar. Okay. And then you'll pour it around at the table. Have everybody pour up a, a bit. And then grab a, uh, a bowl. Can we do that? All right. Y'all do that. Disperse these. And then we'll take communion together here in just a moment. church this morning as we uh as we get ready to partake of the elements one of the things that just came to mind is one thing i love about this is it not only reorients me to to christ and to the cross but it also kind of reorients me together with you amen like when jesus said church he had this in mind and this guys whoo i love what jesus did for me But when I see Jesus changing you, it tears me up. 